OFM. Hi, and welcome back to OFN. Today we start our series on cancel culture with the 16th president of the United States of America, Abraham Lincoln. Born into poverty, he was raised on the frontier in Indiana. He was a self-educated man and became a lawyer. After that, he had his first go at politics, becoming a political party leader, an Illinois state rep, and a U.S. congressman. After that, he went back to practicing law. During this time, he became worried as additional lands were opening up to slavery as a result of the Kansas-Nebraska Act. Lincoln knew it was time to return to politics and became a leader of the new Republican Party. In 1860, Lincoln ran for president and won handily by sweeping the North in victory. The South viewed this as the North rejecting their right to practice slavery, and Southern states began to secede from the Union. The new Confederate states fired shots on Fort Sumter, South Carolina, and therefore, President Lincoln called up special forces to suppress the rebellion and restore the Union. Lincoln's accomplishments throughout history are well documented and he is looked at as one of the best presidents this country has ever had. Still, there are those in our country who are trying to rewrite history and cancel his achievements out of our history books. Let's take a deeper dive into history and determine if Abraham Lincoln should be canceled or not. So we already know, Honest Abe grew up poor. His father, Thomas, was a farmer, cabinet maker, and a carpenter. His mother, Nancy, died when he was just nine years old of milk sickness. In 1839, he met his soon-to-be wife, Mary Todd. They married in November of 1842. They lived in Springfield near his law office. Lincoln was an affectionate husband and father to their four sons. Sadly, only one of the four sons would live to maturity. There was nothing in his childhood or early life that would even suggest cancel culture for the 16th president. Even in his early political career, he spoke up against the Mexican-American War and supported the Wilmo Proviso, which was a failed proposal to ban slavery in U.S. territories won from Mexico. In October 1854, Lincoln gave a speech in Peoria, Illinois, now known as the Peoria speech. In this speech, he laid out specific arguments against slavery. He argued, slaves were people, not animals, and possessed certain natural rights. He said, if the Negro is a man, why then my ancient fate teaches me that all men are created equal and there can be no moral right in connection with one man's making a slave of another. This speech was an important step in Abraham Lincoln's political ascension. As mentioned before, when Lincoln was elected president, the South viewed it as the North rejected their rights to own slaves. Lincoln had won by a landslide, 180 electoral votes for Lincoln, and 72 electoral votes for John Breckinridge of the Southern Democrat Party. The South was outraged by Lincoln's election win. Six states, Florida, Georgia, 
Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, and Texas declared themselves a sovereign nation. The Confederate States of America. Both President Buchanan and President-elect Lincoln refused to recognize the Confederacy and declared the secession illegal. And we all know what happened next. On April 12, 1861, Confederate forces fired on Union troops at Fort Sumter, thus the start of the Civil War, all because President Lincoln was against slavery. And as we continue, there's still nothing so far in Lincoln's history that would suggest being a victim to cancel culture. Let's continue. Didn't President Lincoln end slavery? The answer to that is yes. The Emancipation Proclamation went into effect on January 1st, 1863, which affirmed the freedom of slaves in 10 states not under the Union control. Lincoln commented, I have never in my life felt more certain that I was doing right than I do in signing this paper. He said that in regards to signing the Emancipation Proclamation. He then spent the next hundred days preparing the army and the nation for emancipation. The Union armies advanced south liberating three million slaves. In the spring of 1863, Lincoln was ready to enlist black troops and not just in token numbers, full regiments. He encouraged Andrew Jackson to lead the way in raising black troops. On November 19th, 1863, Lincoln went on to deliver the Gettysburg Address. In the first sentence, Lincoln says, This new nation is conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. This speech is short, to the point, and was the speech needed at that time. The opening is iconic and memorable but the whole speech is something everyone should listen to at least once a year. Four score, Four score and seven, seven years, years ago. ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation. Conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we're engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. And we have come here to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place to those who here gave their lives that that nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. But in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate and we cannot consecrate. We cannot hallow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here, have consecrated it far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here, but it cannot forget what they did here. It is for us, the living rather, to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is for us, rather, to be dedicated here to the great task remaining before us that from these honored dead we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain and that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom and the government of the people, by the people and for the people shall not perish from the earth. I still see no reason for canceling Abraham Lincoln at this point. 
If it weren't for Honest Abe, it might have been another 50 years before slavery was abolished. Some say he should be canceled for his Native American policies. Well, let's take a look at what happened. The Dakota War of 1862, also known as the Sioux Uprising, was an armed conflict between the United States of America and several bands of Dakota. The conflict started on August 17, 1862, when a young Dakota killed five German settlers. That night, a council of Dakota decided to attack settlements throughout the Minnesota River Valley. They made extensive attacks on hundreds of settlers and immigrants, which resulted in 358 settlers killed and 30,000 forced from their home. This deeply alarmed the Lincoln administration. Lincoln sent General John Pope to handle the situation. Pope fought mercilessly against the Indians. He ordered Indian farms and food supplies to be destroyed and even ordered the deaths of Indian warriors. Remember, this is war. Lincoln did not say, hey, let's go kill some Native Americans. He sent General Pope as a response to an attack on the country's citizens. There is one important part of this whole story which shows you Lincoln's character more than any part in his life. When the war was over, Pope had arrested 303 Indian warriors accused of killing settlers. They had warrants to be executed by hanging. Abraham Lincoln personally reviewed all 303 warrants for execution and commuted the sentence of all but 38 of them. He showed compassion and leniency. The governor of Minnesota, Alexander Ramsey, later told Lincoln that he would have gotten more presidential support had he executed all 303 of the Indians. Lincoln replied, I could not afford to hang men for votes. Does this sound like a man we want to cancel from history? Lincoln is probably one of the most compassionate presidents we have ever had. He showed he had a heart no matter what the color of your skin. John Wilkes Booth, a well-known actor and Confederate spy, attended a speech that was given by Lincoln on April 11, 1865. In this speech, Lincoln promoted the idea of voting rights for blacks. After the speech, Booth was outraged and hatched a plan to assassinate both Lincoln and Grant. On April 14, 1865, Lincoln and Grant were scheduled to go to the Ford Theater and attend the play Our American Cousin. At the last minute, Grant canceled and decided to go visit his children instead. Lincoln was assassinated that night. Our country is at a crossroad. We cannot let cancel culture change our history or alter it to believe someone is not the person they truly are. History, whether good or bad, is essential to how we move forward as a nation. And good history must be rewarded and recognized and must be taught to our children so they will know who were the true American heroes. 
President Abraham Lincoln, the 16th President of the United States of America, was that true, compassionate American hero. As a country, we must face cancel culture head on and fight for our true American history to keep it intact and to pass it on to generations to come.